This is Twit. You know, towards the end of the book, you kind of you answer the question, "How did Android succeed?" Right? And um, you know, in the earlier in the early days of Android, things like things were hyper focused on openness, and you know, this ethos that of of building this kind of platform and the and this uh, ecosystem that can be you know that could exist. And here we are now you know, nearly a decade, you know, from the, from the events that you write about in the book, you know, how do you, how do you think you define Android success in today's landscape, right? Like what, what is defined for success for Android now, you know, cause it used to be getting the OS in as many hands as possible. And, you know, for all intents and purposes that, you know, clearly you can still put it in more hands, but a lot of that, you know, that long climb up the mountain has kind of happened. So how has it shifted from back in the beginning to where we are today? I, I think, I think the main thing we need to do is to get people to grow more hands. I think that's the way we do it. <laughs> I, I, if you'll notice for the last several years, um, we don't really talk numbers so much anymore. Like occasionally mm -hmm. at an mm -hmm. IO, they will say, hey, you know, we got, you know, this many devices. I think the last one was IO a couple of years ago, like three and a half billion or whatever. Um, like they'll mention it occasionally. It used to be like every year it'd be like, Hey, look at this, look at this, look at that. And then eventually it's just not interesting anymore because yep, there's a lot of people. And then it's more about serving the needs of those people and serving the needs of the manufacturers. Like hardware devices are coming out with new capabilities. We need to make sure that those are handled in the platform. Uh, users have more needs around, you know, privacy, day security, whatever. Uh, and so it's, it's all about sort of continuing on this this rather fast treadmill to make sure that the releases um, that we're coming out with and the devices are coming out with are going to be competitive in um, an ever competitive market like it's never gotten easier um, I love the there was a quote from Hiroshi at the end where I said so what do you think about you know being successful he's like eh, eh, eh. we're not we're not there like yeah. all we are is like we're, we're still here and we get to keep working on it like the competition is really fierce. What's exciting is continuing to get to work on this thing so that you can address those competitive needs going forward. That to me also is success. It's well, Hey, we're still here. Like I can look at APIs I created 12 years ago and go, ah, that's a shame. I bet we could do a better job of that, but at least we're still around so that we can, we can do that. Right. I think if we weren't successful, that means, well, that that ship sailed and that's another product I worked on that's no longer there. And let's go find another job in the valley. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, nice yeah. to have that legacy. Right. <laughs> For sure. So. Yeah. And and I mean, that that is what propels you to the point. You know, it's just that way in life. Right. We are who we are because of the, the things we did well and the mistakes we made. It's all it's all part of the soup. Um, love the book. Anyone who yep. has not read it yet really needs to check it out, especially because the, I would imagine the Venn diagram of people who would enjoy this book and who uh, enjoy Android enough to subscribe to a weekly podcast about it is pro the, the overlap is huge. So Android's <laughs> the team that built uh, uh, the Android operating system, uh, author Chet Haas, who is sticking around. He's not going anywhere on this episode, but uh, he's written a wonderful book. Y'all should check it out. I do also want to mention that, um, and you point this out, all profits from the book, they go to charity. They're donated to uh, charities like Women Who Code and Black Girls Code. So yeah, that's just, that's just yet another awesome thing about uh, what you're doing with the book and everything. So, um, and also just, uh, just a huge congrats to you because anytime I talk to someone who's written a book and this is not your only book. I know you've written others, but I'm just always in awe of anyone who can organize yeah. thoughts, organize information, create a book. It's a long process as you talked about earlier. So I'm very impressed anytime I talk to someone as successful in writing a book as you are. So, Hey there, I'm Micah Sargent. Look, as a geek myself, I feel it's only fair if I admit something. We can be kind of hard to shop for. So what do you get for that geek in your life who has everything already? Well, a Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With a Club Twit subscription, they're going to get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, exclusive outtakes, behind the scenes and special content, and I love this, exclusive shows like my own Hands on Mac and Hands on Windows from Paul Therott, as well as the Untitled Linux Show. So purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash clubtwit, and they will thank you every day. Hey, 